Welcome into K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway. The Wildcats win their 15th straight Sunflower Showdown by the score of 31-27. to And I would say that it's probably the most entertaining that we've had in a long time, but a little more scoring similar to the way that the 2018 game ended where K-State trailed for most of the game. It felt like it was a dire situation. And then what do you know? A quarterback takes it himself, runs it in to the left side of the end zone for the go-ahead score, and the Cats do the job, finish it off. A big-time win when, boy, things look dicey, and I know that fans were going to melt down. I know that anybody and everybody that has ever worn purple in their life was going to melt down, myself included. I'm, I'm very much going to be honest with you guys. Like, like I said all week, the last time K-State lost to KU, I was 10 years old. So the only way that this body and this mind knows how to handle a K-State loss to KU in football, it's from the perspective of a 10-year-old. And I'm not sure you guys wanted to see that from a 25-year-old man this week. And I'm certainly glad that you guys aren't going to have to see it. And I don't have to find out what that looks like. You can also probably debate the use of the term 25-year-old man there. Uh, some of you probably would disagree. But let's focus on the men that won the game for K-State. Will Howard stepped up. He had the one interception. There were some moments that, sure, people can kind of nitpick. But when it mattered most, I think Will Howard ends up probably being him and DJ Giddens, the two best offensive players tonight for K-State. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of the, the quintessential Chris Kleiman culture game where it doesn't always look pretty at times. You have to do, go through adjustments, but they stay the, they stood the fight and they, and they battled. I mean, they, they, didn't, they didn't blink. They were focused. They came out the second half. The second half didn't start well. But then after that, KU didn't score again after the first drive of the second half, and I think that, that was big. And how about Marquis Siegel? He, he caught My an God. interception. He he caught one that counted, so it, it was it was a good all around performance. There were some up and downs, but I think that that's just kind of what you're going to get in, in this league. Nobody is perfect. I mean, we, we've seen it firsthand. Yeah, shout out to Marquis Siegel, my guy. I've been calling it for what feels like years now. He's only been here for one year. I've been calling it every single week. He is in position to make plays. And finally, he got his chance to convert, get an interception. That counted in the end zone that essentially helped K-State seal the game. There was still plenty of time on the clock, but K-State, Will Howard, the offense, they came out, they ran the thing down, and, and things ended up working out. And before we dive into any of the scary parts of the game, I mean, K-State with over five minutes left took the ball. KU had every single time out, and – the Wildcats made sure not to give the ball back to KU. Obviously, they did a great job of blocking when KU knew that the run was coming. But the biggest play ends up coming from Phillip Brooks, who ends up hauling in the catch on the sideline for a first down. Good throw. Looked like a good catch from where I was on the field. I know that uh, apparently the replay booth thought, eh, we might need to take a little peek at that. And it probably scared a lot of people, but the play stood. Uh, what did you make of that last drive where K-State just executed almost to perfection? Yeah, I mean, uh, I texted uh, some of my friends that I said before the drive started that that's a K-State beef uh, legacy drive. And they, they performed and they blocked well when KU knew that the run was coming. And, of course, it had to be Phillip Brooks, who all season has been so steady. He doesn't have his best game tonight, but has two catches and made the biggest catch of the game on the biggest play of the game. And that was probably, I said that in the game thread that the Will Howard pass to Ben Sennett for the touchdown was probably Will Howard's best throw of the season. But I, I think that you could make an argument that that third down throw to Phillip Brooks is probably his best throw. Yeah, uh, the Will Howard numbers look very funky when the game comes to an end because, yeah, they don't look good, but I think he played way better than what the numbers suggest. And if you're going to look for fault and why this thing struggled early on for K-State, it's not in him. But he goes 13 of 24, 165 yards, two touchdowns, a pick. ESPN has given him a negative one QBR. Now, keep in mind the QBR is not human ISS. That is just taken by numbers. So they probably saw, how did this guy end up with so many backed up negative run plays? Uh, that ends up being a good thing for him. So yeah, that final drive, you make one throw and Will Howard made it be a special one, one that counted. He talked about the Senate one earlier. Let's go back to the start of the game and the way this thing played out. K-State came out just like they've done in almost every single game this year. Drove down the field, got an opening touchdown. It was a great throw to Ben Senate. And you thought, oh, okay, here we go, maybe selling it. Similar to the Missouri game where I think we all showed up. We're like, don't really know what to expect. And then you get that first drive, and it's like, 
Ooh, okay, maybe we can breathe. The you know everything's going well it, for it, these guys. It felt like a typical K State KU game after the first drive. I think everybody yeah. kind of had that feeling because K State gets the score and goes and gets a three and out right after. Yeah, I mean KU fans were probably thinking, oh, here we go. And K State, you know, you're thinking turn on the gas and make this thing interesting. But then the Cats stalled a couple of times, and the KU offense gave the Wildcats fits. We knew this from last year. Andy Kotelnicki is a very talented offensive coordinator can give any team problems, and he gave K-State problems tonight when Cole Ballard gets to start over Jason Bean. Lance Leipold said after the game that Jason Bean was cleared. He could have gone, but because of practice time and everything else, they went with Cole Ballard, uh, which I'm sure KU fans will argue and debate. Cole Ballard played with his hair on fire. Now, he was he was very, very good for KU given the circumstances, uh, and so I don't really think he was the problem, but KU gave K-State struggles with the Wildcat, all the pre-snap mo movements that they had, and it took K-State over a half to adjust because KU came out and took a two-score lead and popped off with a, a couple big plays to start the second half, and that's when things felt real scary. I think the score, was it 27-16 at one point? Yeah, with uh, like 13.50 to go in the third quarter, it was 27-16. to it, it almost felt like, you know, you can chime in with this, it felt like a little bit the Texas game in 2021 where Texas didn't really have a quarterback, so they went yeah. wildcat. They had a lot of speed mo options, but it, it just felt like that. And then eventually K-State had enough hats on the ball, and they started to figure it out a little bit. It, it was funny, though, at one point, there was uh, KU had either scored a touchdown or, or it, they either didn't get a first down on their drive or they scored a touchdown. And then that ended up uh, not happening at the very end uh, with the Marquis Siegel picks, uh, pick in the end zone. But it, it felt very Texas 2021 uh, defensively, and then K-State figured it out, and the defense did it just enough to win. Well, and it, when you think about how this ends up playing out, one of the big things we talked about going into this game was the turnovers were going to be huge, how that played out. K-State ends up winning the turnover battle 2-1 to one, when it looked like it, they may not, especially when that fumble hits the deck by KU. That would have been big, and they ended up picking up like 20 yards on it because K-State couldn't recover it, and it gets scooted down the field. But the thing that I talked about when it came into discussing turnover battle, it's not just about winning the overall margin. It's making sure that you don't become a big loser and give a big play with a turnover. And K-State got lucky. Will Howard threw what could have been a pick six, and and honestly, I was surprised it didn't get picked. I think everybody here was because then you just saw the ball land on the field. Like, ooh, boy, that was that was a little scary. And that ends up being the difference. And that was right after KU went up 27 to 16 as well, because I think it was I think it was uh, that same drive that Treshawn Ward bust out the 50 yard run, which is probably the biggest play of the game yep. if you think about it. Yep. KC was kind of dead in the water didn't have any momentum and Treshawn Ward rips off a 50 yard run where I think if you take that carry away on the night he I think he'll average like two yards a carry yep it was I mean K-State took advantage of KU mistakes when they needed to and then similar to a lot of other games where the defense had struggled early on they locked in late they gave the offense a chance to win the game and finally it feels like K-State's offense came through and did that against a good football team I know KU's down to their third string quarterback but Ballard played well and like we've discussed many times it's not really the quarterback in this KU offense it's the offense itself KU K-State finally beats a good team in KU KU tonight. They did it in a similar way to other comeback attempts that fell short. They get the job done. They've won 15 straight, and that's a uh, pretty significant deal because now you don't have to come back to Lawrence for another two years, and that's a, that's a fortunate feeling getting this game at home next year because it helps because Lance Leipold has certainly changed, changed things around and put things in a good spot. So that is uh, – that. What a what a night here in Lawrence. I mean, it was a it was a good game. Booth, by the way, R.I.P. the booth. This is the last game without the renovations. Yep, uh, I'll grab my sledgehammer and I guess I can help him on the way out or something. Maybe take my own chunk out of it and let him know that I've never seen K State lose a game in this building. At least when I'm in attendance. Uh, been to I've been to every yeah. I mean, I've been to every game here since 2011. I missed the 2015 game, but everything else. So uh, nice to add another win against KU to the memory bank, and uh, we'll have to wait another year for that 10-year-old meltdown to come out, and that's a beautiful thing to have happen to me. Uh, any final thoughts from Lawrence here tonight, Drew, before we skedaddle and get the rest of our work done? Uh, I mean, I think the one thing that kind of goes a little overlooked because, I mean, we didn't hit on it, Jace Brown, another yep. great night. Uh, I made the joke 
uh, last week that Jace Brown might just be a road game guy. I, th I think he might just be a road game guy. That's 96 yards for the true freshman. By the way, he is now K-State's third leading receiver on the season. That is impressive. I uh, would not have expected that at the start of the season, but he's come through. And K-State would probably like to see him show up in a home game next week against Iowa State because uh, the Cats will get the clones. As we are recording this, we still have no idea when that game is going to be. Fingers crossed it's not a night game. I want a night game, Mason Sox. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to help everybody out. I really, There's not a good game time for that game after Thanksgiving. Like Everybody's kind of like, eh, whatever happens. Uh, and because of the outcomes in the Big 12 tonight, K-State is still going to need plenty of help next week around the league if they want to get back to the Big 12 title game. They either are going to need Texas to lose and throw that into the mix. Seems unlikely it's Texas Tech in Austin on Friday. That's always a tough game for anybody to play that Friday after Thanksgiving in Austin. Or you need Oklahoma and Oklahoma State both to lose who – they they played with fire. They probably got, you know, a slight burn this weekend. But OU survives in Oklahoma State. They got fortunate, turned the game around with a big turnover. They ended up beating Houston. So next week, it's Oklahoma State at home against BYU. Probably not going to get help there. And Oklahoma's at home on Friday against TCU. Probably not going to get help there. But the Horned Frogs need that to get to bowl eligibility. So you never know. But... The big news, K-State 8-3, and three, chance to get to 9-3 and three next week. A 10-win season still on the table, and the Wildcats get to close it out with Farmageddon at home next weekend at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. For K-State Online, I'm Mason Voth. Not, I about said David Booth. Uh, Mason Vuth, no, no, no. I've heard a lot of people pronounce my last name wrong. I've never been one of them. I about did it right there. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway. Thank you for watching K-State Online. Make sure to get over to On3 for plenty more coverage of the Cats and their win in Lawrence and also some preparation as K-State gets ready to take on Miami in basketball on Sunday. The, I guess uh, the, the first game against Nigel Pack, even though nobody on this staff or roster ever played with him. But it's going to be exciting nonetheless to see where things go. Cats going for the perfect weekend, by the way. The women beat Iowa on Thursday. Volleyball has swept Texas Tech. The Cats get a big one in the Sunflower Showdown. And the men beat Providence in OT. Now they got to take care of business tomorrow against the Canes. So that will do it for us here from David Booth Memorial Stadium. As we know it for the final time, Cats win it 31-27.